us worship. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship our God. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship our God. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship our God. Welcome, my sister. Welcome, in the name of the risen Christ. We're glad to have you here with us today, the first Sunday of Lent, and what times we are in, what times we're living in. So it is so good to be able to be gathered in our times. Uh, this, this morning, we're going to have a lot of music, and uh, we can't have hymn sings with, you know, raucous hymn sings or anything like that right now with the pandemic, but what we can do is a uh, hum sing. So I would in encourage you to hum along vociferously and, uh, you know, just, and, but just try not to get the respiratory droplets too far, but then you got your mask, so, you know. Anyway, we're gonna keep, our, keep each other safe, keep ourselves safe, but do try to participate in to, with the music as much as you can with a KN95 mask on. Uh, I'm really delighted that um, Pat and Patty gave us these beautiful uh, sunflowers for our worship uh, flowers today, our altar flowers, and to celebrate the spirit of Ukraine and, and solidarity with them. And I'm also delighted that Pastor Logan and I are here together, We're going to, and I've asked her to co-celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion with, with me today, and so that's going to be exciting because we're going we're gonna to kind of work this out as we go. We hadn't had a lot of practice, you know, and uh, none. <laughs> so, but hey, we're both, we can flow with it, and then we're going to bring the Lutheran genius and the Methodist genius into all this, and... Um, what a time for oneness in our world. So this should be fun today. And as, we, and as we move in this service toward that culmination of, uh, you know, when we honor and celebrate and participate in what Christ did for the world, remember that uh, this is a huge example, the primary, uh, premier example of generosity giving of self in our world. So let us pray our invocation. Gracious God, the journey is long and the cross is heavy. We come today to this place of worship, many of us tired, tired of responsibility, tired of turning the other cheek, tired of returning good for evil, and tired of serving you unnoticed. 
We wish someone else could bear our burdens for us. We long for an oasis in our wilderness. But in the quietness of these moments, help us to turn our eyes upon one who has taken responsibility, who has turned the other cheek, who has returned good for evil, and who has borne our burdens for us. Enable us to enjoy our lightened load, to continue our Lenten journey, to find the oasis of your love, and to drink the waters of mercy and compassion. Amen. So now let's uh, have a hum sing. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ our Lord. We are his new creation, by water and by word. From heaven he came and sought us, that we might ever be his living servant people. By his own death set free, called forth from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth, our charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name professing. Spirit led. Though with a scornful wonder the world sees us oppressed, by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed, yet saints their watch are keeping, their cries goes up along. But soon Jesus, the great physician, touching him. And, uh, and if, you keep, if you've never met Jonathan, if you haven't had that uh, good fortune, then just, just see a, a being uh, touched by the Christ. God, we thank you for your healing touch on Jonathan. May he always know blessed assurance, know that you are with him, and we pray for your healing touch in his life. We pray for peace for him to be trusted during this process. Okay, anything else? Any other prayers? 
I'm, I'm so grateful. Mike and Shirley are here after a long absence of pandemic and the tree falling on your house and all that good stuff. And um, so I'm so glad you're here. And, uh, and we've got visitors back there. Yeah, welcome. Glad you're here. So we, we pray for newcomers into our midst. We pray for uh, pe- people returning to to worship uh, as we hopefully start feeling safer and safer to be able to gather again together. <coughs> yeah. Uh, I'm thankful for the Eco Generation Plastic Roundup yesterday. Yeah. And the Rio Nancy Rose and Alan yes. were there volunteering and about several other Methodists. So good showing. Yeah, that's our uh, yeah. Sacred Earth Initiative in Action. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. okay. So Eco Generation, all that they are doing, and all that this community is doing to keep our waters, especially our beaches, more pristine, restore them. Yes. Anything else? Uh, Continue to encourage my dad. He's <coughs> going through his third round of chemo now, so that's already three months past when they told him he wasn't going to make it. He's, his levels are almost normal. Um, the doctor literally last appointment and told him that like was talking about the future for the first time. So mm-hmm. yeah, like three months, like a year from now kind of thing. So we're oh. sort of mm-hmm. over the moon and just but he's still I mean he's got a long road still, so just continue first. But we're all super crazy happy. <laughs> yes. Gratitude. Gratitude for the gift of life and, and the gift of family and the gift of uh, what medicine doctors can do and so we pray for it for his continued healing and recovery. Yes. Is there anybody here who has not seen an image this week or, or watched a video or something about Ukraine? Everybody's seen what's going on, so, so we know. Yeah. Yeah. God in your mercy. Men and women in the military and those who wait for them at all. Yes. And all those who are in harm's way this time. Yes. For, for April, and yes. being sure that she finds a path forward and to wellness. And to yes. We pray for healing, recovery, and wellness in April's life. And for strength and peace in yours. So we're going to, uh, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer, a contemporary version of that, as part of our liturgy for the Sabbath and the public communion. But let's pray this prayer now uh, that was on the UMC Discipleship website about Ukraine. Let us pray. Holy God, hear our prayers for all those who will die today because of war in Ukraine and other war-torn countries all over this world. Grant them an end to the suffering of this world and eternal peace that is only found in you. We pray for the people of Ukraine, Russia, and all nations that war and bloodshed can be avoided and a new, just peace can be forged out of this crisis. We ask that God grant wisdom to the leaders of nations, calling them to end provocation on all sides and invest instead in finding the things that make for peace as called for in all our faith traditions. Luke 19 says that we pray for an end to the deep insecurity and mistrust on all sides and call on leaders to build trust based not on military might or alliances but on the basis of our shared future and common humanity. God, we know that now is a time in which past harm should be acknowledged and addressed and new partnerships can be envisioned. We pray for and call on our leaders to have the courage to take small, verifiable, and independent steps toward peace, inviting others to reciprocate. Now is the time, God, to invest in conflict resolution, diplomacy, and international cooperation. So guide us so that not we won't be just more weapons that only escalate tension in the region. 
be with those who are suffering in ways that we cannot. Protect them from devastation in ways those positioned in authority will not. Shield and comfort them as they confront the terror of violence that surrounds them and destruction that is a daily part of their, their lives at this point. Hold them close to your heart and stay the hand of the enemies against them. Give us the courage and strength to cry aloud against wickedness in high places that dares to harm others made in your image. Comfort the children and heed their cries to be saved from harm in this world. Make us a people who love our children, all of our children, more than we love greed, power, and control. Overturn governments of tyranny wherever they're found. Disrupt the intentions of evil and give us power to stand against demonic forces of greed and control. Grant that peace and justice come to warring nations by the hands of those courageous enough to stand and study war no more. Let thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, we pray. Amen. shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For the Lord will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence, and will cover you with his independence. Under the Lord's wings you will find refuge. God's faithfulness is a shield and a buffer. You will 
will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that waits at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your habitation. No evil shall fall on you, and no scourge come near your tent. For God will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the owl, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because they cleave to me in love, I will deliver them. I will protect them because they know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will satisfy them with long life and show them my salvation. What I'd like for us to do this morning is have a heart meditation for the people of Ukraine. I'd like for us to have an experience, uh, especially before we move into the sacrament of Holy Communion, knowing that we are one in Christ globally, internationally, in the past, the present, and to come. That the, uh, the great communion of saints, the angelic hosts were all gathered in one being non-local beyond time and space so if you would take a moment to go within and center yourself in your heart and take this moment to we pray God that you would unite our hearts and our brains that you would Give us a, your heart of compassion, your heart of loving kindness. So we focus on that heart, on your heart, and we pray that during these moments, joined in prayer, that our hearts would beat in concert with the heartbeat of God, of you, and with all that you have created. So let us breathe together for a few moments in union with the heartbeats of those in Ukraine, in Russia, all over the world, in the heartbeat of God. A common heart. And I ask that you fill your heart space with an awareness of elevated emotions as, as the scriptures teach us. And, and think of what it is you would like to see and feel and hear on this planet in terms of our connection with each other. Feel the joy of peace on earth. Feel how good it could feel for there to be war no more and that we all are working together. Feel gratitude. 
see that vision that is God's vision for us. Fill your heart with God's vision. Loving God of grace and glory, you sent Jesus to tell us that we are one with you, one with each other. And in that power of that vision of our true nature, we send out these feelings from our heart center until it goes into our whole bodies healing each of us spreads out into the congregation touching each other with your healing mercy and we go out into the streets of Florence with this love and this mercy and this compassion and grace out into Lane County and Jonathan and Coos County. We spread this, we radiate this all over our community and throughout the state and throughout this country and throughout the world. And we pray as we send this, each vision of this is a prayer. Our prayer as that through your love, your transforming love, all the weapons against innocent people are missing their targets. We pray that all efforts at hurting others would be foiled. And we know that in your wisdom, in your vision of us, our true nature does not want to hurt each other. We pray that you would move the hearts of the leaders, especially Vladimir Putin, that you would help him to lay down whatever is driving him to hurt others, and that you would convict all of us of our need to repent and lay down our weapons of war of hurting others. We pray that you would put a shield of protection around all those who are in harm's way, that they might continue to live and be in your abundance and wake up to the oneness of this world. We pray that your angels would minister to any of those who have been hurt, would protect those innocent children and the families who are fleeing, and would take this breakdown, transform it into a breakthrough that we as a human species would go to another level we would draw closer to your vision for how you want us to be family to each other on a global level. We pray for your arms of peace to wrap themselves around this planet. We pray that you would open our hearts and our pocketbooks in generosity to help those who are struggling and who are leaving behind everything they have. We pray that you would grace this world with a miracle of peace on earth. We pray all these things in the name of the Christ. Amen.
when we when we come to this sacrament in a moment we'll have a an invitation um, from Jim and I mean Jeannie and Jim Strathdy this sacrament will be a a drama acting out what I've just been praying about the generosity of Jesus that he gave his life he gave his life, all that he had to give for peace, for people to break down those walls between themselves of judgment, of better than, less than, of withholding from each other. He, he broke those, all those rules. And here we are to remember this is what is at the core of it that we are one in Christ. So let's hear the invitation. Christ, let us come with you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
And so with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which you gave himself up to us, he took bread, and he gave thanks to you, and he broke that bread. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, <coughs> gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the very heart and mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts and on us gathered here on these gifts of the bread and the wine and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body and the blood of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ one with each other one in ministry to all the world till Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence as children of God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Except it's a contemporary version. Contemporary version.
Bishop Easterwind says there's a lot of good work of Christ that's not postponed. We're going to be taking up our offering belatedly, and uh, I'm going to let you out the door. We have the offering. So, um, but remember, if you want to give to UNCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, uh, you would note that that's for Ukrainian relief if you want to help support that. And then in early April, we've got a wonderful opportunity to be one in Christ with our uh, neighbors in the in Christ uh, saving time. And then I believe yeah, well, anyway, I uh, just want to remind everyone that uh, for our campers, uh, the bottle, we have the big bottle drop, so you can pick up the bag at the back of the sanctuary. Make sure you get the card because it has a UPC code on it that you can open the door so you can drop the bag in. Pretty simple instructions are. 
all attached. And uh, I think Linda will probably get some more bags out there. We're down to just a few, uh, two. So I would encourage you all to do that. It really helps the kids uh, for their summer camp. Also, uh, food share. As you all know, a uh, constant need for those folks who are food insecure in our community. And so we always try to fill the barrel at the entrance to the sanctuary, and then it's usually about 90 pounds of food uh, that we take over to food share, and, um, and they perform the magic. Um, and so I encourage you all to, when you shop at Fred Meyer, or Safeway, or, or grocery outlet, and you buy a couple for yourself, buy a couple for someone else. And not just so, food. And not just food, exactly. Not just food. Uh, maybe some food for animals, mm -hmm. uh, diapers. Some, diapers. some diapers, uh, some personal hygiene products. Um, go, you know, just know that there are people that are seriously in need in our community. So um, those are just the two quick announcements. And then last but not least, as you leave the sanctuary today, could you sort of tidy up your pew as we, uh, as we haven't gotten ourselves back into a routine yet of signing folks up to clean the sanctuary. Uh, so if we could sort of clean up after ourselves, straighten the hymnals, uh, make sure you take your communion cups and, and uh, your Kleenexes and the variety of things that get left in the pews. So thank you very much, and um, yes, Karen Bayless. I just wanted to add as far as food share, um, a lot of people don't have cooking facilities mm -hmm. or a way to store food. Yeah. So um, it's good to provide some things like uh, canned tuna, uh, lunch meat, those kinds of things, cheese, mm -hmm. those kinds of things are really good because there's people who just have no way yeah. to uh, store anything or cook. And if you want more information about food share, talk to uh, our dear friend, yeah. Karen Bayless, who, who volunteers there along with Vicki Philbin. So, good to see everybody back. I have an announcement, Kat. Oh, there you are. <laughs> uh, you know, today at City Lights, uh, People can join Dr. Mel Bertoff, political science professor and co-author of the Pentagon Papers, this Sunday at City Lights uh, at 4 o'clock. It will be a live Q&A with Mel Bertoff on the Ukraine crisis. And uh, it is uh, free. And uh, if anybody's interested, I, Jim and I did sign up ahead of time, so we got a place. You know, it's a dollar to sign up if you do it online. But anyway, I just wanted to give a plug for that because I think it's pretty timely. And uh, he is a professor. Bertoff is a professor emeritus of political science in Hatfield School of Government and at Portland State University. So he was co-author of the renowned Pentagon Papers when he worked for the Rand Corporation. He's now a resident of Deadwood, Oregon, and has partnered with City Lights Cinemas for the discussions in the past. No, I don't need that. You <laughs> I just want to make an announcement that don't forget on the 26th that the Sad, but a happy time because no, it isn't. <laughs> happy because we can all be together and say goodbye to Pastor Karen and Alan. And we do have it going on over at the Lutheran Church because they're so kind. And our pa our new pastor, our yeah, you are a new pastor. <laughs> anyway, she had a way in to <laughs> her husband's pastor to get us over there due to our fellowship hall. It could be done, but let's continue to have it over there because Scott and them would have to rush to get everything in order. So please come, bring a card, say goodbye to these good people. They've really been good, and please come. Thank you.
You want to do that again? Everyone, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is my mic on? Is my mic on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, we're going to have about one verse that looks like, oh, God, our help in the ages past. We're going to come sing that. And then our, we're going to have a sung benediction. We're going to sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Are we going to take the offering today? Oh, yes. And we're going to take the offering. <laughs> this is a retired pastor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll first take the offering, then we're going to sing, then we're going to benefit, and then we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> 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 benediction and there will be sung in the same your seats and we'll do that. Oh, 
you the joy to work with. Mm -hmm. You are going to have so much. Uh, you're going to have a good time to share cheers to them. Oh, and it's drops again. Looks <laughs> 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 like I'm getting out of this. Your mic. Your mic is in your. You know what if I? Yeah. What if I try it? You do. <laughs> there you go. Go forth in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Okay, now we're going to sing. You're going to sing your response to that. Let there be peace on earth. Amen. There we go. Yeah. Okay.